Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, what are the main traits of a good software test automation framework? Let me answer. Here are the list of main traits of a good software test automation framework. These are all the list of things, okay? There may be many more, but uh, these are the main traits, okay? So first one, modularity and reusability. What is mean by modularity? You have to understand first, okay? How the modularity fits into an automation, test automation framework. Let me explain that first. You see, now let's say this is your project, okay? So you are automate, you have automated your, this particular software or whatever it is, and uh, you have put in a single box, everything together. It's not modularized yet, okay? All the automation code of this uh, entire application, software functionality is in a single box. It's not modularized. What will happen? Okay. So it's not modularized. So it will be better if you can modularize something like this. You can break like this, okay, into four pieces. One, two, three, four. Now it got modularized, right? Again, you can break into like this. Again, this one, four parts, this one, four parts, or whatever it is, okay? How you want to modularize, you can modularize, okay? Breaking into like this modules kind of stuff. So what are the different ways of uh, modularizing a particular framework and all? So that, uh, you know, instead of a single piece, it will be one first piece, second piece, third piece, fourth piece, like that and so on, okay? So how to modularize it? There are several ways, okay, that you can modularize a automation framework with by, you know, in a single project, in a single project, you can have multiple projects, okay? In a single project, you can have multiple projects can modularize the automation code which belong to this project by creating multiple projects. Uh, you see, I have worked on a very big project, an e-commerce project earlier. And it was so huge that, you know, a lot of teams used to be there and I, uh, every team used to work on a particular uh, module of that particular application, okay? For example, login, there used to be separate team for working on that, then logout, uh, not logout, for example, uh, register, separate team used to work, okay? Then, you know, uh, for chat, okay, so, uh, support chat, some other team used to be there and uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, credit card payments, there used to be a separate team working on this module for net, uh, you know, I'll take different stuff like uh, for, uh, you know, this kind of things like, uh, mm, what you can say, cart, okay, cart, add to cart or whatever it is, okay, there used to be a separate team for home page, there used to be a separate team. Okay, homepage used to be very important for marketing. So there is like that, e this single e-commerce application was, okay, having a lot of modules like this login module and separate teams used to work on separate modules. So you see, there used to be only one project for this, uh, you know, for, for automating this e-commerce application, there used to be one project, but under this single project, there used to be multiple projects. There used to be one separate, uh, you see, it will be modular. This is a modular framework, you can say in other words, okay. Let's say this is a project under this project, uh, there will be some separate, this is one project, this is another project like that. A branch of trees used to be there, okay? This is a tree which contains again trees. Every branch is a tree again, okay? Every project contains another sub projects like this, okay? So this project is a combination of multiple projects inside it, okay? Every project used to have its own form.xml file like that, okay? So you can imagine that, okay? It's a separate project, separate project, group put together into a main project, okay? So you can modularize, this is one way of modularizing I am saying, okay? In a single project, you create multiple projects and a group of projects will form a single project, okay? You have modularized by creating some sub-projects in this case. Or there's another way to modularize. If you don't want to go with the projects, you can go with libraries, okay? You can, uh, you know, you can create libraries. For every, every module, you can create a separate library. For login module, you create separate library and uh, for uh, register, you create library, library having some, you know, class and interfaces and this classes and interface contains some methods and variables and all those stuff, okay? That is what is libraries, is another way of modularizing, okay? So you can break down this module related code into separate uh, projects or, or module related code into separate libraries or you can use classes or you can use, you can modularize by, you know, uh, login related uh, automation scripts will be part of one class. Whereas register related automation scripts will be part of another class. Like that also you can modifies or methods. You can create methods. Okay, methods or functions. 
for uh, re, uh, for creating a reusable code for you know uh, for reusing the code for different activities of this login register and all together okay so methods you can modernize with the help of methods or you can use a combination where uh, in a project you can have multiple projects under the projects you'll have libraries under the libraries you can have classes under the classes you can have methods or functions okay so what is the advantage of this kind of modernizing the code okay modernizing the mod by implementing the modularity thing in the automation framework what is the advantage the advantage is reusability okay whenever you need something right uh, you can simply okay reuse it you can call that methods inside that particular thing okay you know because of modernization they will be properly organized okay and you can easily find them and uh, instead of duplicating that you can reuse them okay it can be part of any okay library or it can be part of uh, any you know class method like that okay so it will reduce the duplication because of modularity it will sim uh, simplify the project uh, by organizing it well okay and uh, and also it will avoid the duplication okay and encourage the reusability and also it will make the test maintenance easier because if something something need to be updated you can easily find out because you know uh, which area will have what okay so in which uh, sub project we have to do the change or in which library we have to do the change which class we have to do the change on which method we have to, you don't have to update all the test cases maintenance will become easy here because you don't have to go and update or uh, restart uh, creating automations from scratch if something changes rather you can go to the respective place of a respective method or class or whatever it is and update the code there okay something changes or something need to be changed this is what is called as modularity and reusability in automations frameworks uh, this is very important based on the size of the project you have to decide which level of modularity you have to achieve and uh, the advantage or side uh, you know the uh, use of the modularity is you can reuse okay it will be become it will become very easy to reuse the stuff and uh, know where exactly you need to do the changes and maintainability maintenance will be less in this case okay next uh, main trait of uh, of a good software test automation framework is a flexibility flexibility means uh, so the framework should be flexible enough to accommodate changes in the application under test okay whenever there are some application changes uh, it should be very easy for us to mod modify that code you don't have to update every uh, complete code rather you, you should be able to point out that code that need to be updated okay so flexible such kind of flexibility should be there wherever you are instead of you know for example if you go for selenium id kind of tools and all right uh, if something changes you have to delete that uh, created automation test and freshly record record that uh, script again okay so maintenance is high in case of selenium id but here test automation framework should generally possess this you know flexibility kind of stuff where you don't have to re-record the uh, you recreate all the automation script of that particular changed things rather you can go to a particular method where the changes need to be done and simply it should be affecting all the test cases okay with the less maintenance it should be done that is called as flexibility scalability easily scale to handle a growing number of test cases okay so in big projects or complex applications where la larger number of test cases are there okay so initially we'll start with less number of uh, you know test cases and uh, slowly 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 when you know the size of the automation project should increase and it should be scalable so that uh, even the automation framework should be able to handle a growing number of test cases without any problem okay so the automation framework should work with less number of test cases and also more number of uh, test cases and uh, with growing number of test cases so tomorrow if uh, already thousand uh, test cases you automated as part of this framework and tomorrow another thousand comes also the framework should be ready to scale okay that's called a scalability without any problems okay the framework should be able to scale up, should be scalable then cross platform and cross browser compatibility your framework should equip this cross platform and cross browser compatibility where you know uh, uh, your automation script should be able to run on different environment test environments containing different operating system different browsers and all okay it should not be specific to any particular browser or any particular operating system rather your automation framework should okay support the automation scripts to run on different operating systems browsers and different test environments like mobile devices and all those stuff easy test case creation and maintenance okay well, whoever is actually writing the automation scripts using this automation framework they should feel that okay how easy this framework is okay uh, they should feel like you know the creation of the automation scripts is uh, easy because uh, the automation framework is actually giving such kind of easiness okay 
So the framework should provide an intuitive and user-friendly interface or syntax for creating and maintaining test scaling. People should not be writing driver or find element kind of stuff. Rather, they should be calling some methods like a login. Okay, if they call that method login, it should allow to login. So that is called as easiness. Okay, the uh, the writing of the automations should uh, be easy, and the complexity of writing the automations should be abstracted from the individual tests. Okay. So testers should be able to write test scripts with minimal effort and understandability. Okay. That's what the one of the goal of the automation frameworks and uh, main trait of a good software test automation framework. Okay. Okay. Then robust uh, reporting and logging. Robust. Uh, this one you can simply say anyhow maintenance is covered, right? Easy test automation test case creation should be there. Okay. Uh, whoever is writing the automations should not, should feel easiness. Okay. User friendliness uh, while creating the automation frameworks. Instead of uh, okay being difficult, uh, okay it should be easy. Then robust uh, reporting and logging. Okay, so uh, this uh, good automation framework uh, should generate very good reports. Okay, so which uh, frameworks, uh, which reporting technology this framework is using also matters. Okay, so some advanced reporting things like you know uh, extend reports. Okay, should be used in generally frameworks. Okay or maybe something even more advanced it can be there also can be used and uh, you know they should display a lot of charts graphs okay a lot of uh, information uh, on test coverage any errors some screenshots should be embedded in the reports and all the stuff okay so and uh, some logs should be generated in the reports or whatever the generated logs should be also be displayed in the re reports okay and uh, all the percentages of how much failed how much passed how much uh, skipped or whatever it is should be displayed in the reports with a lot of information like test environment details and uh, in, and uh, timeline and all those stuff okay and also it should contain some logging mechanism why logging is required for troubleshooting purpose if some some test fails uh, with the logs right you can easily figure out uh, why this particular automation test got failed okay for troubleshooting purpose some logging should be there okay so what went uh, what happened while the tests were executing because you cannot be sitting before the uh, computer machine while the scripts are running right the scripts uh, automation scripts will run day and night okay so there is a uh, after you come back and see some tests were failing you have to investigate like what happened okay while the scripts were running because you cannot be there before machine always so by looking at the log, logs you can figure out uh, which uh, why a particular test got failed what is the reason behind that troubleshooting can be easy okay so robust reporting and logging is one of the trait main trait of a good software test automation framework then integration capabilities. This automation framework should integrate with uh, some continuous integration, different tools like, you know, continuous integration and like Jenkins and all should be able to integrate. Okay. You have to create the automation framework in such a way that your automation framework can run the scripts uh, with the help of Jenkins. Okay. Then uh, uh, we should be able to integrate these automation scripts as part of test management. Uh, you know, a lot of test management tools nowadays uh, integrate the this uh, frameworks and all automation frameworks and, you know, uh, will give it a lot of flexibility there and defect tracking systems uh, automatically defects should be reported or okay whatever it is okay so you can run your automations from uh, scripts from the test management tools like that okay so whatever the tools and technologies that this automation framework should be integrating with it should be able to have that capability of integration okay then support for data driven and parameterized tests okay so you see a single test can contain multiple sets of data and you don't have to create the same test multiple times for multiple sets of data rather you can create a single test and uh, you know uh, pass the data multiple sets of data and same test will run multiple times for every set of data or even a single set of data also can be there and that data can be put into some external excel uh, uh, files like uh, excel files or some other json files or any other property files etc and your framework should be capable enough to get the data from okay data from that ex uh, that files even from a database also and then run the tests accordingly okay so in data driven things you're going to separate the data from the logic okay from the automation script logic so data will be separated tomorrow if the data changes you can update that uh, from the files etc database etc okay parameterization means um, you see the methods uh, test methods should be parameterized okay test methods should be parameterized so that uh, sometimes we have to pass the data to the methods okay so data driven and parameterization will work together okay to achieve the things a framework should support data-driven testing, allow, allowing testers to execute test cases with different sets of input data. It should also enable parameterization, all, allowing dynamic data input during a test execution. Okay, you can read the data from different type of files and uh, 
and parameterize the test methods to accept that uh, data from the other files or database. Then support for parallel execution. Okay. Automation framework should have the capability of uh, running the rest in parallel because in this is especially required in case of large projects uh, which need to run the automation scripts on different test environments. There will be more test environments and a large enough good number of scripts will be there. And uh, if you run sequentially, it's not going to work. So we have to run the scripts in a parallel way in multiple machines. Okay. So what will happen there is, you know, your scripts will run faster and you'll get the results faster. Maintainability and extensibility. Okay. I already told you about the maintainability in case of automation frameworks, the maintenance maintainability should be high. Okay. Whatever the automation framework you choose, maintenance maintainability should be good. Okay. That means uh, maintenance should be less. Okay. It should be maintainable and uh, maintenance uh, should be less. Why? Because, you know, if something changes, you don't have to spend a lot of time in, you know, updating the uh, changes in the automation framework uh, scripts and all rather at one single place. If you go and update, it should, uh, you know, it should work. Less maintenance should be there. You don't have to re-record the automation scripts and all those stuff. Okay. And also, as the number of test cases and uh, testing efforts uh, increase, right, your automation framework should ex extend actually. Okay. As application evolves, you see, initially the application size will be very small when you started with automation. And as the day goes, uh, years goes, what happens is this uh, project size will increase, application size will evolve. And at the same time, the framework also should accommodate these changes and should scale up and extend to the uh, evolved or increased size of application, okay? Strong community support. So the framework, whatever you are using, uh, should uh, have a good community support in the market, okay? Whatever the tools you are using, the framework and all, should contain good community support so that if uh, if, if you are blo blocked due to some XYZ reasons, there should be some community who should help, who should help you out in solving those problems and uh, moving forward with the creation, okay? of the automation scripts in the framework. And also, the, if, uh, if the community is very strong, you can implement the best practices uh, to make your framework work better, okay? So these are all the main traits of a good software test automation framework. So whatever uh, I explained, right, you may not be able to answer all the things in the interview. You may not be able to remember all this stuff. Whatever you remember, try to answer for this particular question if you come across in the interviews. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye.